Hi, David Vizard here, and you are watching Power Tech 10. This is episode 66 of Power Tech 10, and it is living proof that no matter how carefully you plan, something will come in and upset those plans. So what am I talking about here? Well, just the other day I got the go-ahead from Dart <clears throat> to copy the videos I did for them onto my channel. And I thought, well, I might as well get started on this because it's pretty easy. All I do is just copy them. So, since I'm a little held up on the current video I'm doing on ignition, then I'm going to go ahead and post this. Now, I have to apologize for the quality of the picture. The guy that filmed this did so with a somewhat old camera and the focus wasn't quite right on it. So we're stuck with it and that's that. So I do not want to hear any complaints about the video. As far as sound goes, I think you'll find the sound in this is okay. So let's forge ahead with this first one. And, and by the way, this series is more aimed at professionals. It's, a, it's a, a seminar I did at PRI for DART. Incidentally, I filled the audience uh, space there, which the previous lecture was... Um, uh, done by the late Dick Maskin and David from um, Rear and Morris. Uh, and they got about a half a room full of people and I got probably one and a half rooms and that was the last seminar. And people waited up to two hours after for me to autograph their books. Well, I want to thank all those guys who spent all that time waiting for me to finish. Anyway, let's get on with the video. The first question you're probably going to think of is, why can we do this now and not 20 years ago? And the answer is pretty simple. There's been some dramatic changes in casting techniques which have allowed companies that produce cylinder heads to produce much nearer a net casting. and. Uh, uh, those casting techniques, actually a lot of the original techniques, although they've been modified somewhat, started off in Formula One about 30 years ago. Um, when Cosworth got into the uh, business of doing Indy engines, they had to come up with a new technique for casting that was much more um, uh, solid, less porous, because the, uh, the engines for the, the, the heads for the DFV became porous when they got about 50 pounds of boost in them. Um, so, you could say that was the start of it. And what that's done is it's allowed companies such as Dart to produce cylinder heads that were very close to what their original designs were. Now, this doesn't mean they are right there. What it means is they are very close. Also, we've had a surge in the number of companies making cylinder heads. So, the uh, if anyone's going to stay on top of the pile, they have to keep on doing R&D. And I'm sure most of you are aware of the fact that DART do a lot of R&D. Uh, you can see it out in the pro stock ranks. And um, uh, they have probably one of the best cylinder head R&D facilities there, there is in the country in terms of, of cylinder head development, plus a huge manufacturing capability, plus the ability to make them in such volume that they are a volume producer and of course, with a volume production goes cost reduction. Anyway, so what this means is that if you compare porting now to what it was 30 years ago, porting 30 years ago was 90% removing metal and 10% shaping it to the final shape. Now it's 90% final shaping and 10% removing metal. So you don't spend the time uh, um, porting the cylinder heads. Uh, 
we're gonna, what we're going to do, we'll, we'll call the current cylinder heads a net casting because it's about as close as we're going to get, at least for the next 10 or 15 years. So what this allows us to do is to spend our time putting the finishing touches on a cylinder head. Now you might say, well, why don't I just buy a CNC head? Well, that's fine. Sure, you can buy a very good CNC head, but the company that you bought the head off makes most of the profit on the CNC porting. You don't. So if you want a CNC head, that's fine. You'll make a sale and you'll make your profit on that. But if you have time to spare, you can utilize that time very effectively and make at least 50 bucks an hour. It depends on how fast you port, but you could be as much as $70 an hour porting your own heads. Here's an example. I did this, this particular one here. If I can scoot across here, I don't have a laser. But this is a 200 uh, CC dark Chevy head. And it took me one hour, 20 minutes to go from that to that. And that's the difference in flow. On the dyno, the difference on a, uh, an engine was 502 horsepower to about 535. So uh, that means you could port that entire set of heads for eight times one hour, 20 minutes, whatever that comes to, eight hours, about, about 13 hours. And uh, if you'd have bought a CNC head, then you would have probably have paid $800 more for it, whereas you, you can put that value into your own pocket from the porting. And uh, the thing is, is that the difference in port volume between those two is only about 7cc on the intake and 3 on the exhaust. So you can see there isn't much that's come out of it in terms of, uh, of metal. It is, it's really a, a finishing job rather than, a, than an outright porting job. Now there's the finished cylinder head. You'll notice that I don't spend time putting a shine on anything that's all finished off with an 80 grit emery. Now if you've got customers going to buy cylinder heads, they may want to see a shine on there, not that it does any good, but uh, unfortunately the term port and polish has become ingrained in the, the, the hot rod uh, uh, vernacular there. So um, if you're going to build an engine and you're supplying the customer with heads, and they don't need to see them. You don't need to use anything uh, finer than, than about an 80 grit uh, finish on it. 